In this question we're going to look at a package that is sitting on a slope and we're going to have to resolve all the forces on that package to be able to answer the question. Some really important information is given in this question so we need to make sure we're taking all of that into account. We're given information about the angle of the slope because we know tan theta is three quarters. We're given information about the coefficient of friction, so we know that mu is 0.5. And we're told that the package is in equilibrium and is on the point of slipping down the plane. Now, the first part of this question says to draw all the forces acting on the package. Now, I would recommend that we draw a diagram like this on any question that involves slopes. So, why don't you pause the video now and see whether you can draw an accurate diagram showing all the forces acting on this package. Now, let's see whether you manage to draw all the forces that are acting on this package. Okay, whenever you have a particle sitting on a slope, what you should do is resolve all your forces that are acting parallel and perpendicular to that slope. The first three forces that we can always put on to our diagram are the components of weight acting down the slope and perpendicular to the slope and also the normal reaction. So. The normal reaction R always acts perpendicular to the slope. The component of weight down the slope is mg sine alpha in this case. And perpendicular to the slope is mg cos alpha. Okay. Now we need to start using some of the information that we were given in the question. We're told that the package is on the point of slipping down the plane. That should tell us that F max is acting up the slope. So we can add on F max there. Now we need to resolve the components of this force P that are acting perpendicular and parallel to the slope. So the component of P acting up the plane is P cos alpha. And the component of P acting perpendicular to the plane is P sine alpha. Now if you're not sure why those components are acting in those directions you really need to check back in your notes and if you're still not sure be asking a teacher to explain why those are the components of P acting perpendicular and parallel to the plane. Now that you have the correct forces on your diagram, why not pause the video and see whether you can now resolve forces. So write down your resolving of forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. When you think you've done that, restart the video and see whether you've done that correctly. We can now resolve our forces using the forces that we were showed on our diagram. As we know the particle is in equilibrium, when we resolve our forces parallel to the slope, we know that P cos alpha plus F max, the forces acting up the slope, must be equal to mg sine alpha, the force acting down the slope. 
we can resolve our forces perpendicular to the slope and say that the normal reaction R is equal to P sine alpha plus mg cos alpha. We're starting to get some simultaneous equations here that we're going to have to solve. What we might want to do here is put in the information we know about the angle alpha. Now, we were told that tan alpha is 3 quarters. Now, remember, and this should be in your notes, that when we have a triangle that has alpha in, and we know that tan alpha is 3 quarters, so opposite 3 over adjacent 4, we can see here that we've got a right angle triangle and using Pythagoras the hypotenuse is 5. So that tells us or we can work out that sine alpha is opposite over adjacent so that's 3 over 5 or 0 0.6 and cos alpha is 4 over 5 Okay, or adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 0 0.8. Pause the video now and see whether you can put in the information that we know about the angles, or sine alpha and cos alpha, into these equations and see whether you can now start to resolve and work out what P and R are equal to. Now, using the information we know about the cosine and the sine of our angle alpha and our equations where we've resolved our forces, we can be getting some simultaneous equations which we should be able to solve. So, if we take our first equation, which was P cos theta, we can now be writing that as 0.8P. Okay, plus F max. Now F max is mu r, and we were told our coefficient is 0 0.5, so F max is 0.5 r, and that's equal to mg sine alpha. Now we know the values of all of those. It's 1.1 .1 times 9.8 times. 0.6 so we can work out what that is our second equation said that r is equal to p sine alpha so that's 0.6p plus mg cos alpha and again we know all the values for those so that's 1.1 times 9.8 times cos alpha, which is 0 0.8. Okay, so now we've actually got a pair of simultaneous equations where our unknowns are R and P. Now I should just go back to the question here and say we were asked to work out the normal reaction R and the force P. It doesn't matter which order you work these out in, okay? As long as you work out one of the forces, and then you can use that to work out the second. So, why not pause the video now and see whether you can solve these simultaneous equations. So, work out one of your unknown forces, and then you can use that to work out what the other force is. Okay, now if you did that and you worked out one of your forces, so either P or R, and then used it to work out your second force, you should have got solutions that P was equal to 1.96 Newtons and R is equal to 9.8.
Newtons. Now, if you didn't get either of those answers, I suggest you perhaps go back a step, make sure all your calculations were correct and match what we've done in the video, okay, and just double check your solution to your simultaneous equations. Okay, if you're still having problems, make sure you ask your teacher and they can look over your calculations to see whether you've gone wrong.